Hello friends. My name is Dr. Vijay Bhatia. I work in the mental health as a psychiatrist. Today we are going to talk about auditory hallucinations. Auditory hallucinations are the hallucinations which we hear when there is no stimulus. There is nothing outside, but you still hear something. That is auditory means hearing, hallucinations means that sensations or perception without stimulus or without object. Hallucinations can be hearing voices. These voices can be from people that you know or are from strangers. One may recognize the voices or may not recognize these voices. It can be a voice of one person or more than one person. Can be commanding or demanding or telling you what to do, even if you don't want to do that thing, can be distressing. It can be like a running commentary on actions or behavior. For example, you are walking down the stairs, you are having conversation with someone. So it just tells you whatever you are trying to do. It can be in third person, meaning that two people are talking and discussing about the patient. It can be more than two people discussing about the patient. It can be a male voice or female voice, young voice or old voice, or people you know from the past, or even people who have passed away. That can happen in severe bereavement. The voices can be derogatory. That means they are trying to put you down. They are trying to blame you, accuse you, or they can be amusing. That means they can be funny, entertaining. Or sometimes we don't hear the voices, but we simply hear the noises, like hearing bells or hearing music or band, or even songs. And they can be quite distressing or amusing. They can stop you going to sleep and affecting your daily activities. Hearing noises can be distressing. People are being called names when no one is there. Can be outside the head. Well, by definition, hallucination should be outside the head, but some people claim that they are hearing voice inside the head, then we doubt, is it hallucination or is it just their belief? Or sometimes they hear people or the voices just near to their ear. They're telling me that it is just on their shoulder or just on the side. They can't see the person or anyone there, but they hear the voice or some kind of um, bells ringing, or it can be far away in a distance, even in a different town, or even further away from where you would normally expect the voice will not reach, and even in another town. So people can hear only when something else is going on. For example, hearing voices only when tap is turned on or water is flowing or something else is going on. They hear the tap, the water, but along with that, they start hearing other voices. We will explain this in more detail, some of these. First is the elementary hallucinations or elementary auditory hallucinations in this chapter we are talking about. This is the experience as simple noises like bells ringing and undifferentiated whispers. You cannot make any sense sometimes, but the whisper is going on about you 
And sometimes they can be voices, but they're quite basic and simple, just calling your name or calling someone else's name. They can occur in organic states. By this, I mean like some kind of delirium, like alcohol withdrawal, severe withdrawal, or acute infections either in the brain or in the body that is making the brain or mind confused to the extent that people or mind start playing tricks with them and they start hearing these voices. Noises or partly organized as music so people can hear just noises like we said bells or other things but they can be partly organized like a music like drums playing or flute playing something is going on or they can be completely organized as hallucinatory voices in schizophrenia voices are characteristics of schizophrenia so if the person is hearing the voices and you should doubt seriously could it be schizophrenia and if they are present you should definitely consider this one uh, although you have to rule out organic states and severe depression and bipolar illness as well quality of voices it can vary in quality it can range from uh, very quiet to very clear and can be ascribed to specific individual. The voices, I know this voice belongs to my uh, childhood friend. Uh, uh, she's not there, but I know that it is her voice. She's telling me what to do, what not to do all the time. And uh, so this is distressing. Or the voices can be vague. You don't know where the voice is coming from, what are the sound like, but it is there. You simply don't know what is happening and you cannot describe them very clearly. And there is no clarity there. Patients are often undisturbed by their inability to describe direction from which the voices are coming or even the sex, they don't care whether it's a male or female, simply they are concerned the voices are coming, they are getting louder if they don't obey them, and it is distressing, it is affecting their sleep, it's affecting their daily activities. The voices sometimes give instructions, they demand to do certain things that go and hurt yourself or go and hurt somebody else or go and break the window or go and pick up something. So they demand you, they give instructions, in which case they can be command hallucinations and can be very distressing. These are termed as imperative hallucinations when they are demanding giving instructions. Voices may speak about the person in third person. As I said, the two people are talking about or two or more people are talking about the patient in a third person and the person or the patient can hear these people talking about him or they are planning something about him and the person is becoming paranoid and suspicious about these people. May give running commentary as we described earlier that if you are doing something in the kitchen or making something then there is a running commentary going on. Now Mr. So-and-so is cooking, now he's going upstairs, now he's washing his hands, and this can be very distressing. Auditory hallucinations may be abusive, or they may be neutral, or sometimes even helpful in tone, and they guide you, don't do this, don't do that, or try to do this, it will help you. At times they may speak incomprehensible nonsense or neologisms. Neologisms is making new words. New means new or giving something, a new word that doesn't make any sense. So all these things can happen in mental disorder, especially in schizophrenia. So we try to establish the quality, the range, 
the outside of the head or inside the head, how the person is being affected, how it is going to affect their emotions or their even behavior. So it's important to understand these hallucinations. The effects on the person is variable. A number of patients have continuous hallucinations that do not disturb or trouble them. In that case, although in some cases they have learned that, okay, I can't do anything about them. I tried a few different distraction techniques like putting the headphones on or putting the music on or uh, putting the television on loud so that it d d distracts me from the, or the voices will stop but they don't, or they sometimes go outside. Uh, sometimes they feel that, okay, they are not relaxed, probably that's why they're hearing these and they try to have a good night's sleep, but it doesn't stop. For others, the persistence of the hallucinations cuts across all activities. So a person is seen as to be listening and even replying to them at all, all times. So you can hear the patient talking to the voices when no one is there. And they might even tell them to be quiet and shut up and don't disturb, things like that. And you, when you see them, sometimes they get distracted as if somebody is there and they're talking to somebody. And they're quite typical of mental disorders like schizophrenia. There is a special word when called Get ankle or warden. It's a German word. I have difficulty in pronouncing this, but what it means is this, there is auditory hallucination. In what what happens is you are hearing own thoughts being spoken aloud. So whatever you are thinking, the thoughts are spoken aloud. It describes hearing one's own thoughts spoken aloud just before or at the same time as they are occurring. On the other hand, if they occur once the thoughts have come and then you are hearing them, that is called echo de la fancy. It's a French word meaning hearing them spoken aloud after the thoughts have occurred. The other thing is about thought broadcasting and thought diffusion. What patients complain is that their thoughts are no longer private, but they are accessible to others as if they are being broadcast. Other people are hearing them and he knows them that they are hearing because he has seen some reaction in them and they are very much convinced. It can be a disorder of the thought, but it is because he believed they're hearing it, that's why I have put in the auditory hallucinations. What is the origin of the voice? Patients may insist that origin of voices are the result of witchcraft. They definitely know that if there is a, somebody done the black magic on them, there was a witchcraft and that is causing them to hear the voices and they're going crazy. Other people say that it is telepathy, that people can communicate through other means other than just uh, direct sound waves. It can be through radio waves or talking through the radio and it can be through television and so on. They can give any example or any reasoning where these voices are coming from, but mostly they will say, I don't know, I just hear them, I know that they are real because they are there, I tried everything. Sometimes they claim that the voices come from within their bodies, such as their arms, legs, stomach, etc. Some patients hallucinate when speech movements uh, and hear speech that comes from their own throat. They can feel it, they can see that their muscles in their throat are moving and it is, they are hallucinating but no connection with their thinking. So it, they, they are not thinking, but they can see their muscles are moving in their throat. Therefore, the speech is coming and they can hear that speech, which is hallucinatory. Hallucinatory by definition means that there is no real 
hearing a voice uh, and they hear without the stimulus. One patient complained of her toki toki tongue because she was continuously auditory hallucinated and felt speech movements in her tongue. Thus, she had both auditory and possibly some kind of somatic hallucinations, which we will discuss in another video about somatic hallucinations to do something with your own body that you feel something that then you relate it with something. Motor functional hallucinations. This is the strange phenomena in which an external stimulus is necessary to provoke hallucinations, but the normal perception and the hallucination in the same modality are experienced simultaneously. For example, a patient heard odd hallucinatory voices only when water was running through the pipes of his ward on a psychiatric ward. Another patient heard voices when the radio or television was switched on alongside the broadcast voices. So they hear both broadcast voices, but alongside that, they were hearing other people talking about that. Or sometimes they are getting messages on the television. The radio is talking about them. The television is actually talking about them. What are reflex hallucinations? A stimulus in one sensory modality producing an hallucination in another is called reflex hallucination. This is in fact an hallucinatory form of synesthesia, meaning two senses are being combined one way or the other. For example, the feeling of discomfort caused by seeing and hearing somebody scratch a blackboard with their fingernails. And another example, a woman who experienced pain whenever certain words were mentioned. The third example is, as doctor was writing in his case notes during the interview of a female patient, she said, I can feel you writing in my stomach. So the doctor is writing on the paper and uh, taking some notes, but the patient feels that things are being written on her stomach. So it's like from one sense, she's seeing something, but she's feeling on her body as well. Reflex hallucinations normally do not have much significance. What is extra campaign hallucination? It means that someone is behind me all the time. He moves when I move. I keep on hearing them talking about my disease down in the post office. These hallucinations are experienced outside the limits of the sensory field, outside the visual field, or beyond the range of the audibility. The person is saying, I can hear people talking about me in another town. Thank you for watching this video. I have made other videos on other hallucinations like tactile, visual hallucinations. Uh, please watch them. And if you like this video, please do not forget to press the like button and also subscribe the channel for other mental health issues in this um, uh, series. Thank you.